Oh. Um, I went on and I did the women of the Bible and did that. And then, yeah, overnight, I was like, what the heck? Like, I woke up to, like, a million views. And I was like, this is insane. And I thought that that was, like, the pinnacle. I did another one for fun, again, because, like, it was enjoyable. And then that one hit, like, five million. And I was like, this is insane. Wait, what? It hit five million? Yeah. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. Right? One day. How do, you, okay. how, do you, how do you introduce yourself? Like, if somebody does not know you, how do you introduce yourself? I want to hear this. I mean, I usually just say, hey, what's up? I'm Wanda. You know, it depends on what, what I want to get into. Yeah. If I want to start talking about, like, my professional career, then I'll be like, oh, I'm a Christian hip-hop artist. Uh, I mean, I pretty much kind of leave it there. I mean, I usually don't, like, go into, like, oh, here's my resume of life, you know? Yeah, I got a Christian hip-hop artist, you know, been featured on... What been been featured on all the the shows? Hold on, I got the I got to read the list. <laughs> I, I I got to read the list because when I when I was going back, I was like, this is crazy. Been featured on Michelle Obama's playlist. Indeed. How 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 did that feel when you either saw that come out or when you heard it? What's going on, family? Sorry to interrupt the episode. I'm gonna let you get back in just a second, but I had to let you know. Okay, if you're somebody who's a small business owner, entrepreneur in the DFW area, and you're constantly looking up and, and you're seeing the the, the Eric Thomases on the big stage. You're seeing the Mel Robbins taking over speaking. You see the David Shands, the Inky Johnsons, all these other speakers, and you're trying to figure out, well, why can't I get up there? And why isn't it my turn? And why is it their turn? Because they have a secret weapon that you haven't tapped into into just yet. And that's a podcast, my friend. So look, here's the thing. I want to just show you the blueprint on how you can get that journey started. Right. So that you can begin to position yourself so that you can begin to get the big checks and so that you can be in demand. OK, so this is all I'm asking for you. I'm asking for just a couple of hours on this Saturday coming up. Just a couple of hours. Click the link just down below. Start your podcast here dot com. You can sign up, get registered. And I look forward to meeting you and seeing you there. I just I just want to I want to get a reaction from that, because when I heard that myself, yeah. I was like, I was happy and excited for you. Yeah, no, it was definitely crazy. And I was like, oh, snap. Like, because it was wild of like, oh, like this is what she listens to to get herself hyped for her yeah. podcast. So like, it was wild just seeing that. And I think it encouraged me to like, oh, I don't have to like neutralize my music to like make it like palatable to other people. So it was encouraging to like, you can just be yourself yeah. and not have a motive when you're making your songs and God can like take care of the rest. For sure. Okay. And then the ESPN one, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you when you heard your song on ESPN, well, that was crazy. I was excited because I love LeBron. So I was okay, like, oh, yes, okay. LeBron right there. <laughs> my song right there. It was great. It was phenomenal. So basketball is probably one of my favorite sports. So I that was like really exciting too. Just uh-huh. being like, oh, these are people who I watch. And then like, wow, this is like actual television. So that was crazy. The Apple commercial. Yeah, even that too. That was crazy too. When I heard, I mean, because I, I, Apple, you usually don't see people's faces often. But I mean, the music. Apple mm-hmm. always brings music because, mm-hmm. you know, Apple music, all that. But as I was just hearing these things, I was like, this is crazy. I said, what, Apple and then Netflix? Yeah. It's really the unplanned songs. Like, it's literally the songs that were just, like, casually living life. Yeah. Like, that God decides to use to do those things. So, like, to me, it's just encouraging of, like, wow, like, God is just, you know, making a way yeah. and turning up for us. So, I think, for me, it's encouraging of, like, those are not n- neutral songs. Like, they're Christian songs. And, yeah. like, it's like, oh, wow, like, God can just do anything he wants when he feels for like sure. it. For sure. So, you introduce yourself. You say Christian hip-hop artists. Do you say entrepreneur as well? Yeah, like, yeah, I could throw that in there, you know, entrepreneur, Christian hip hop artist, educator, I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You said educator? Yeah, so I like to teach people um, just like how I got to where I am today. So like, that's one thing I also like to do. Yeah. Oh, how long have you been doing that? So I used to do explicit like consultation sessions uh-huh, um, uh-huh. during like quarantine. So like I was yeah. like heavily doing that, um, but I'm about to transition into doing like classes, so. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, because I remember seeing when you put the th- when you put the uh, you put the post out like about the webinar, and I was yeah. like, "That's what's up." Yeah. That's what because I mean I because you have you have uh, you you have a experience that everybody doesn't have, mm-hmm. right? Because going back like when we talked mm-hmm. four years ago, right? Yeah. You you were saying how you were you started off as an intern at mm-hmm. Reach Records. Yeah. And then from there, just just, just walk us back through it because I want to make sure I don't miss nothing. You started off as an intern. Yeah. Then and I got hired back on. I st- so I started off as an intern my junior year. Um, then after junior year, I went back and finished my senior year at UT and then they hired me on staff. Yeah. So as soon as that college was over, I had like maybe one month yeah. to like live my life. And then I started working there. Um, and then, yeah, I started working. And then six months later, I got offered a contract and then I started being an artist with them. So, so I, I know we talked about it before, but I, I just want to just unhash this a little bit. Cause I, I've heard you just share a little bit more about, uh, 
this experience, this journey, while you're working at a record label, yeah. right? Th and this is a record label that you were listening to. Uh, this is a record label that you're familiar with the music, you're familiar with the message. It really yeah. resonates with you, uh, with Reach and with Lecrae and 116. And now, you're, and you're still, and you're putting out music, yeah. right? You're putting out music and you're like, y'all see me? Y'all <laughs> see me? Like, like talk, talk, talk a little bit about that. Like, talk about having a gift, right? Because I told you, I listen to your music, I heard the bars, I hear the bars, yeah. right? You know, the bars, they, they're stacking up like Tetris right now. But, <laughs> <Same bars. laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, talk about having a gift, but then feeling unseen. Yeah. Just talk about that a little so, bit. So, yeah, it was definitely a trying time. So, <laughs> it was like a duality. So, like, one aspect, I'm a fan. So, like, I was just excited to be there. I would say my internship, just excited to be there. I wasn't tripping. Yeah. And so, but I also, in the back of my head, was like, oh, I'm going to get signed by the end of my internship. That didn't happen, though. So, um, going back to working there, I think it was a trying time. I think I, like, definitely got refined in my character, mm. like, heavily. So, I think yeah. a lot of people, you're like, oh, yeah, like, I'm great. Like, you know, like, I know what I'm doing. And God will be like, oh, really? Here, let's see. And like, Damn. God uses tests a lot of times to reveal like what's inside of you. So I definitely got refined in terms of like, God showed me, can you root for other people mm. if like he's blessing them right in front of your face in mm. the midst of him doing your journey? Or can you, yeah, can you assist other people while working on yourself? Can you work on yourself? Like, are you willing to be dedicated and work hard and stuff like that? So okay. I think I learned a lot of lessons along that journey mm -hmm. uh yeah which were difficult because i know at one point like they were like my job assignment was literally to find a female rapper for us to sign oh, <laughs> and it no, was crazy no it was, way. it was crazy it was a crazy time and so even that because i was like Man. i like god had to shift my perspective of like don't try to like cut this person down like literally elevate them because in my head i was like okay maybe god's gonna sign this person this person's gonna open the door mm -hmm. then maybe that person will advocate for me yeah. later in life yeah. so meanwhile like i ended up it ended up being me later in life but it's crazy, like, you just never know. So I think he definitely refined me of knowing, like, him working in someone else's life has nothing to do with him working in your life. Like, uh -huh. he can do those both at the same time. Sheesh. So, yeah. So, so ultimately, were you the female rapper that signed, not signed yourself, but, like, were you? No, it was a totally different story. So, what? <laughs> yeah, so I ended up getting signed, like, on, like, a backstory. Like, I, I always hear different stories. Uh -huh. It's so funny. It's like a legend. <laughs> <laughs> But um, the most recent story okay, I've heard, okay. so we had an interview one time actually at Reach, and so I was talking to our former marketing director, his name is Marcus, and then Ace, he's like the A&R. So the story I heard from there, uh -huh. that conversation was, Marcus was advocating for me. He found me on the internet, uh -huh. and then Marcus was like, yo, like we gotta sign Wanda, like you see her dedication, you see the music, you see all this, and then like it was like a... Like, it was like a half and half duel. Uh -huh. Like, half of the exec team was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other half was like, oh, we don't know. And so then he said one day he actually got on the table in an exec oh meeting. He was like, I'm not leaving until we do this. Y'all have to do this. Y'all got to stop. Y'all got to get it together. And uh, it was like a showdown. And he was like, he was like, I'm sorry I lost my character that day. But it needed to be done. And Man. so then they all woke up. They were like, okay, fine, Marcus. We'll listen to you. And uh, then he got Lecrae convinced. He started getting hype. Then uh, then he also owns the label. He started getting hype. Okay. So then I had like three powerful people rooting for me now. Nice, so I have the nice. owner of the label, the president of the label, and the marketing director being like, we got signed Wanda. So mm -hmm. um, they basically had me shoot my shot on a, on a project. So we had a Christmas album coming out. And so they like gave me a beat and they're like, hey, you know, feel free to do whatever. No promises, but you know, we'll see what happens. And uh -huh. if we like it, it'll stay on the album. And so... Um, I did this song called All Is Bright. And so after I did that, then they were like, oh, wow. Like, this is actually really good. And then it was basically maybe like a month after that, that's when I got offered the contract. Wow. Okay, so you gave him Christmas bars. Yeah. You gave him Christmas hey, bars. Hey, whatever you got to do. <laughs> Man, okay, that's what's up. That's what. So I, I was I was thinking, and I'm uh, eventually I'm just going to stay in the present, but I was mm -hmm. thinking back, like when we did the last interview, mm -hmm. right? And the, the main female artists that I think were really around that time, uh, I think it was... Nicki Minaj, mm -hmm. I don't think Cardi B was out then, but Nicki Minaj, and I think the only other artist that I might think, maybe Shy Speaks. Mm -hmm. So looking back then, and then now seeing since then, yes. like all the female artists that are coming out, but even seeing your elevation, like I, I, feel, I feel like you're a pioneer in the space. How do you like just just how do you feel about that? Like yeah. looking back and then seeing where we are now. Yeah, it's actually kind of crazy, like seeing like what God has been able to do like in this time period. Cause like 
it's interesting. COVID like makes things feel like warped in terms of time, mm -hmm. but like during the time period, it's, it has been crazy to see how God's been able to use me to open some doors to make it be like, there's no excuse. Like you can easily have a woman do whatever you need on these songs. So I think it's been beautiful seeing that and like gaining new friends. TikTok has been beautiful. So I've been able to find a whole bunch of other women artists and For like sure. always encourage them like, hey man, let me know what you need. I got you. And so that's been great. We've been having this thing called like Holy Girl Meetups oh, in Atlanta. Okay. So I've actually got to meet a lot of women this year. So starting like January, February, like we would all just hang out. I teach them anything you know about, you know, technology. I got you. Let me know. Dang. Just text me. Um, and then we just encourage each other, make uh, TikTok, make content with each other. And then just now we just show for each other's events and stuff like that. So it's been really cool, like seeing that also elevate and develop this year. That's dope. So we're gonna we're gonna come back to TikTok because I got some TikTok questions. We're gonna yeah. come back, but in, but but in terms of uh, in terms of like what you're saying, uh, just like how COVID allowed opportunity. Like, what was it that you were doing during COVID? Like, to where I mean, I guess you were getting innovative and just trying to do stuff. Like, what what were you doing then? Yeah, so it's interesting because COVID literally hit during the first year of my career. So Ooh. it's like I'm just learning, and then now all of a sudden everything's pivoting. So it's like a I don't want to say blessing and curse. So I think it was a mm -hmm. blessing. So I mm -hmm. think. It's interesting because now in my time period, what everybody knew, this is what you have to do and it works, it no longer went out the window. So like now everybody's starting from scratch. And wow. so everybody now has to get innovative. So during that time period, one, I started my consultation session. So nice. I just started giving back the knowledge I had to other people to even like where I got with my first year of like, how did I even get signed? How did I even establish a fan base within this one year? Wow. Um, so that was one thing I was doing during COVID too. I was just experimenting heavily. So I used to do uh, karaoke sessions on the internet. <laughs> So I would just like sing songs and stuff like that on the internet, but it helped me learn like creativity and like uh, it helped me like explore my artistry and just share my songs like with my fan base. And then three, TikTok. So okay. I definitely dove into TikTok. Um, I was one of the early adopters, which is good because I was able to benefit while the algorithm was still popping. Uh. Um, and so, yeah, it was a lot of fun like just seeing that and being able to meet like a whole new fan base on there. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting because that shows like I'll hear certain people who'll be like, oh, I found you because of TikTok. And it's like it used to be Instagram or Facebook. Mm. And so it's interesting how now it's explicitly like, oh, I found you on TikTok. And I'm like, oh, let me not neglect you all because uh. this TikTok platform is actually working. So Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy because I mean, I heard, I don't know how true this is, but I heard that like the the powers that be at TikTok, they can like push buttons and make certain stuff like hit on the algorithm. I don't know. I don't know if yeah. it's true or not. Nobody know. Like the algorithm changed now. So yeah. now it's just like, it's just prayer at this point. <laughs> <laughs> like it really is. All right. So talk, talk about, talk about the uh, Shibuya roll call. Is it just Shibuya roll yeah, call, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I, I watched the videos and I was like, I mean, cause I saw them when you did them initially, but then I saw like, they was doing numbers, like yeah. numbers, numbers. Yeah. How, how did this come about? Was it, was this the, this was pandemic or this was post pandemic? This is post pandemic. This is like, oh, okay, this is like a okay. month ago type stuff. Oh, like, dang. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, it's wild. That one was also like unplanned. So praise the Lord for that. So literally I have friends who we just met on TikTok and we just uh, love making funny stuff for Jesus. Like literally it just brings us joy just to be funny. And then we just love Jesus. So we always talk about our faith. So I have a friend named Chris. And so he like, kind of like me, we love doing Christian remixes. Uh, so he remixed a secular song in this thing called Hallelujah Roll Call. And he started uh, remixing like uh, Men of the Bible. Then I was like, oh, bet, I got you. I'm going to do Women of the Bible. Um, and so then I hopped on it, and then I was like, okay, bet, uh, let me just do Women of the Bible. So I literally was doing this for fun. Like, it wasn't on some, like, oh, yeah, let me do, like, a marketing thing. It was literally like, oh, I love the Bible. I love Jesus and rapping. This is perfect. <laughs> so that's what's up. Um, I went on, and I did the Women of the Bible and did that. And then, yeah, overnight, I was like, what the heck? Like, I woke up to, like, a million views, and yeah, I was just... like, this is insane. And I thought that that was, like, the pinnacle I did another one for fun again because like it was enjoyable, and yeah. then that one hit like five million, and I was like, "This is insane!" Wait, what? It yeah, hit five million. Yeah, and then like Jeez. I look back and I'm like, "This is actually crazy." <laughs> and so, and like literally, Darius, my husband, he's with me. I'm in the living room. I have a green screen behind me, like on the laundry door, and then I'm just like doing like fun characters. It was it was great, Man. and so yeah, it's just wild because like they all just like kept elevating and elevating, and so like yeah, it was just insane seeing like how it can escalate overnight but it was cool because it literally was explicitly about the bible and just yeah. different characters and then you you really broke it down like you broke down the characters i mean it was like it was funny yeah it w but still like you gave information and you gave context on the characters yeah and it was funny too i like yeah. i was like oh that's pretty funny yeah, yeah so 
Man, but kudos on that because I've tried TikTok and I mean I'm not like I've seen like yes you you are a Christian hip hop artist mm -hmm. yes you're an entrepreneur about to dive into some of that stuff too but you're definitely a content creator like I don't know if you consider yourself a content creator but I haven't seen many artists leverage the medium mm -hmm. how you have like you're you're like authentic organic you do what you want to do it's stuff that's fun for you enjoy but like you're in your natural element and then you put it out. So I mean, I'm not surprised. It's fun. It's that fun. like, yeah, yeah. So talk talk about talk about coming into talk about coming. Is it is it is it wind beauty? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Talk talk about this. Talk about this now. Because I mean, I've seen I've seen some of your older videos on, on your YouTube. Yeah. And I see well, older and some like newer ones where like you know you're doing like you're doing the walkthrough and talking a little bit about. Uh, you putting on your makeup routine and stuff like that. So yeah. just just talk a little bit about that. Take some time. Yeah, so Wim Beauty has been fun because I wanted to do like a non-traditional merch. So I noticed like I like t-shirts and stuff, but as women sometimes like t-shirts don't hit the same. Uh, like so like for Darius, I'm like, oh, that shirt looks great on you. But yeah. for us, it's like, ah, I look masculine. And so <laughs> and so like I was like, what's something else that we enjoy? And so um, one of those things were beauty items. And it's also cool because it's a more accessible price point. Mm. So that's one thing also like, Ooh. Yeah, it's like sometimes I feel bad. I'm like, oh, I don't want to charge y'all for like fifty dollars for like, yeah. you know. It's like so now I can sell it for nine dollars, nine ninety nine, and so um, that's been really fun because I actually got to explore like what it looks like to have a manufacturer and distri distributor and stuff. Like I used to think that you had to like DIY stuff and yeah, like print. Yeah, like yeah. I used to always wonder like how do these stores in Walmart like have their labels printed like that? Yeah. So I was able to just explore and find more about like actually having a manufacturer, mm. getting the stuff like actually made and shipped to you. So. It's been a lot of fun and I learned a lot because now like Man. any product I actually want, like I understand the whole process of it now. So I can literally get a whole customized Wande house if I wanted like Dang. every product in my house could be like Kellogg's Wande Flicks. And yeah. so um, it's been cool because it made me look at branding differently. I think it helped me with budgeting because now mm. I'm less mesmerized by brands because I'm like, oh, it's just the picture that they got printed to look nice. It's the same product. It's okay. Man. And so... Yeah, it's opened my eyes to a lot of things and like helped me figure out ways to save money, but then also ways to give back to like give my Christian fans like Damn. quality products, but that are also like affordable. Yeah, yeah. Do you realize how business minded you are? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know if you've ever taken time to like reflect on it and see how like business minded you are, because just what you broke down. I mean, learn, how, how long, how long did it take you to learn that process? Like in terms of like, okay, I, I'm using the product, I'm buying the product, and it's like, well, wait, now I want to actually do my own line. I love, I'm honestly wondering, like, how I got into it. I feel like I stumbled upon it, maybe, like, TikTok or something. Wow. So it probably was the pandemic era that I did uh -huh. all that, and I just dove full force. Definitely trial and error. I think for now sure, I understand, sure. like, why people charge for classes. I recommend it now because, yeah, like, you yeah. skip over the spending your money on, like, too much inventory or whatever. So oh, yeah, they'll yeah, tell yeah. you all those things to, like, scale back your time for sure. but i think for over sure. the pandemic like 2020 to 2021 like that yeah. was like the time that i was just like testing out different things and like okay. having the time to learn all that dang that's dope yeah that, that's, that, that's that's super dope though that's super dope but i mean just just seeing the seeing the, the business insight and just seeing like you know how you've I mean, because you've always been a brand mm -hmm. and you've always been you i mean you've been pumping out music <laughs> since you know, since I was first introduced to you, yeah. uh, shout, shout out to Darius, because he was one of he was like, hey, you got to check one day out. Hey, you got to check out. I was like, all right, man, I'll check okay. her out. I'll check her out. And I told you, I went and I listened. I was like, okay. I was like, thank you, Darius. Yeah. Okay. So what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the separation between Christian hip hop and then like hip hop? Like, why is there a separation? Because I mean, I, I believe I even remember Lecrae saying, "Correct me if I'm wrong," mm -hmm. him saying that he's a he's an artist that mm -hmm. is a that is a rapper. Mm -hmm. Like, talk talk about that because yeah. it feels like it's two different worlds. I think so. I think there's a separation one because some people they feel convicted if you say you're a Christian rapper, so they feel like, "Oh, if I listen to your music, I'm not holy enough." Like mm -hmm. I've noticed that. Like some people are like, "Oh, I'm not holy enough to listen to it," um, and so like. For instance, somebody could be listening to one of my songs uh -huh. and they'll think it's normal. But then if you say, oh, it's a Christian rapper, they're like, oh, no, 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 like, I'm not, I'm not saved um, enough. And it's like, you're, it's fine. Like, you can listen to me. It's okay. Yeah. And so I think there's a stigma of that, of like, people feel like they have to be like churchy uh -huh. to listen to it or to consume it. They feel like they have to live a certain way mm -hmm. versus just consuming it casually, which is interesting because I had a conversation with my friend and he was like, well, people aren't murdering people. So why do they listen to murder music? Like, do they, they don't uh -huh. feel, feel like they have to be qualified for that. But um, I just feel like it just comes with the territory, kind of like pastors. 
Um, pastors kind of go through that where sometimes you feel like you can't be their friend. It's like, oh, that's my pastor. But it's like, oh, oh like you're a normal yeah, person yeah. too. Like they they literally just happen to be a pastor. For sure. And so um, I think it just kind of comes with the calling. But I think um, I would love for it to be mainstream. I feel like yeah. it's uh, meshing now because of TikTok. Yeah. I yeah. think like a lot of Christian songs are becoming popular and people are realizing, oh, it is good. So yeah. um, I'm excited to see like where it goes in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking about speaking of pastors, shout, shout out to Pastor Mike Todd because that was dope with, with him on the feature. I yeah. was like, oh, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. What, what was what was the experience like at Transformation? Because I mean, yeah. I haven't I haven't had the opportunity to be out there, but yeah. like being at the conference and it looked like it looked like it was all the way. Lit. Yeah. No, it was amazing. I think it honestly, like I feel like what they do aligns with like what I feel like God is calling me to do. So mm-hmm. like their motto is to represent God to uh, the lost and found. That's right. And so I feel like God is using me to do that. Um, so like it's like I'm representing what Christian rap can look like to the lost. So the people wow. who aren't saved, they're like, oh, okay, actually, I do like this. Oh, I do like you one day. Like, let me hear more about Jesus. Yeah. But then also the found. So there's people who are saved already who are like, oh, yes, I love quality Christian music. Keep doing it. So. Um, that's why I really like like what they're doing because mm-hmm. I feel like it aligns with that and they're really big on like excellence and then they're just normal. I feel like yeah. it didn't feel Hollywood or anything. Like just for sure. like normal fun people who yeah. love Jesus. So I think it's really cool what they're doing over there in Tulsa and like on the internet as well at yeah. large. Yeah. And so they're awesome people. And then I mean even with even with you, like I there's not an artist I actually can think of to say that your style is similar to. I mean, because with the because you're 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 rapping and and then with uh, with, with the dancing, the choreography, and then I know you have your you you have your not even duality because I believe you 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 go under three names because I know you go one day, I know you go blonde day, and help me with the third one. Uh, Wakanda. Sometimes. Yeah, there we go. How did you how did you decide like okay we're gonna do this like? It honestly comes from interacting with my fans. So um, there's a humbleness that comes to just just talking to your fans, the great yeah, people. So yeah, yeah. these all come from like jokes in my comment section. So wow. like I literally put on a blonde wig one day, somebody was like, "LOL, new character unlocked." Blonde, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I love this, and then so I just ran with it, and it became Blonde. It became a thing, and then we continued the joke. So then uh-huh. I had a song on my project that dropped the project called Exit. So then I named uh-huh. the song Wakanda, and then I furthered that joke later wow. on, like in the content piece of like, oh, this is Wakanda. So it just kind of goes Dang. on with that. Dope, dope, dope. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna transition. We're gonna transition because I mean, you got a show. You about to have a show, oh, yeah. like a whole show. Uh, we backstage. So uh, let let me ask you. We're gonna we're gonna transition to the to the this or that uh, segment, mm-hmm. and you know, you pick one or the other. Mm-hmm. Podcasts or audiobooks? Podcasts. Okay. What was what, what's your favorite like top three? Which top three podcasts? Mm, maybe no for sure. Okay. Your podcast. Okay. And uh, what's another podcast is fire? I think. Hmm. Oh, I think it's called The Basement. Oh, with Tim Ross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He need to have you on there, actually. Oh, you fun? No, you fun. Say, yeah. he need to have you on there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Chick Fil A or Canes? Oh, that's hard. Actually, Canes. Canes go hard. Not without the sauce. Yeah, but it go hard with the sauce and then the bread. I mean, the bread hits, okay? Yeah. The, the bread slaps. It's okay. more flavorful. Yeah, okay. Fufu or stew? Uh, I mean, you got you to gotta have both, though, <laughs> to, like, complement each other. I mean, I would choose the stew because the fufu and nothing without the stew. I got And what, what's, what's your go-to stew? Uh, okra stew. Oh, okay. I never tried that. I tried some fish stew. Never tried okra stew. Okay, okay. All right. Well, let me, let me, uh, well, let me ask you this, and then we're going to go ahead and get ready to get out of here. Mm-hmm. But... Um, is there anything I didn't ask you that I should have? Or something that you just want to tell the people? Something on your heart? Mm-hmm. I think I would tell everybody, you know, if you have a goal and ambition that you feel like God is truly telling you to do, keep running, keep going, because it's going to work out because, you know, God ain't a liar. Um, but I would also say just keep your eyes centered on, like, what exactly did he say? Because sometimes mm-hmm. we add our own little sauce in it, like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, a million fans. And it's like, he didn't say that. He just said rap. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would just say, though, like, yeah, just stay centered on what God told you to do. And at the end of the day, like, he'll blow your mind. He'll do things beyond what you can think or imagine. It says that in the Bible, you know, he has things for us planned that are beyond what we can think or imagine. But stay stay, stay on the course, stay tuned, you know, and just keep on having faith and keep going. Yeah, yeah. My wife asked me this question. So I got to ask you, my wife asked me this question. Okay. She said, she said, I wonder how one day shares her faith, mm-hmm. like, if she's not, like, rapping. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you that question. Yeah. 
So I share my faith like lifestyle wise. So like mm-hmm. one of my roommates, like she was one of my friends who ended up getting saved. And so wow. that was really just by living life and then introducing mm-hmm. her to my friend group. Wow. Her getting because literally the first thing she, <laughs> the first thing she said to me when she like walked through the door, she was like, Oh, I know you're into this Jesus stuff, but I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, comedy. And so <laughs> it's funny because um yeah, so with that, like it literally was introducing her to my friend group. Also listening to them, so like, what is what is she into? So she was yeah. into photography, so I int- introduced her to my shows, which are in churches. So mm. I was like, hey, you want photography opportunity? Uh, Just have to go to the church. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so that got her into the building of nice. church. I remember she was like, oh, like, can I wear normal clothes? Like, do I have to wear like a... Uh, and it was like, no, you can just come as you are, fam. Yeah. So um, are. even stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think I minister to people through lifestyle, like just through my life, through walking with them in everyday life. And then... Sure through those conversations, being yeah. unapologetically like myself and um, also just exposing them to other Christians and other Christian resources. Dope, dope, dope. And then the winner circle of the week, who is one person, or you can say more than one, mm-hmm. that you just want to shout out? You see you see them working. Uh, they may have felt like the person I was talking about earlier who might seem like unseen, mm-hmm. but gifted, mm-hmm. but you see they're talented, you know they're, you know they're talented. Yeah. Who would that person be? I'll shout out two people. Okay. So I'll shout out my homie Portia Love. You know, she's been going hard. She's been working. Mm-hmm. So I'm so glad just to see like what the season looks out like, looks like for her. We have some upcoming songs coming too, so stay nice, tuned nice. with those situations. Um, but yeah, she's been grinding and she's been going hard and like the bars has been on top <laughs> tier. So I'm excited for y'all to hear like all the new music and everything that you know God has in store for her in the future. And then also Stevie Rizzo. So he's also been grinding. He's been going hard. So like I've been a fan of his for like a couple of years now. Okay. And I used to share him on my story all the time. Like. Why is this person not up? Like, hurry up. Like, come on, y'all. Tap in. And so um, it's been cool seeing, like, now his platform is taking off. Um, like, all the fans are coming in. Like, they're seeing, like, his talent and his ability. The monthly listening is going up. So Dope. also, he's been grinding. He's been going hard for Jesus. And the work is paying off. So that's, that's why I shut up. Dope, dope. Well, we're going to get out of here. Let the people know how they can find you, follow you, connect with you, and, you know, just find out about all the dope things. All right, y'all. So... What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Wanda. You can keep up with me online at OMG. It's Wanda. That's O-M-G-I-T-S-W-A-N-D-E on every platform. Love y'all. There it is. Uh, I'm Jonathan Jones, and this has been uh, Beyond the Ball, where we show you tried and true strategies to navigate this game of entrepreneurship. Till next time, peace. God bless.